So FobFilter released Twin 3 Synthesizer. That's an update, of course, to Twin 2. And I'm gonna try and do like a speed review going very fast so you don't waste a lot of time and you get the most out of uh, what exactly is in the box. Let's get started. So first, let's see what we have in the user interface. On the left, we have the oscillators and you can have one, two, three or four oscillators. Right now we have only three. On the far right, we have the effects and you can see reverb, delay, things like that. In the middle, we have the filters and you can have up to four filters. On the bottom, we have the modulations and that's where all the fun. I think the filters and the modulations are probably the main thing, the, the really shiny things in this synth. So I'm going to show you that also in a little bit more details. Now on the very bottom, right where, I mean, that's a, like a status line, there are some other things that you can find, like the arpeggiator. We have the uh, quality, we have the polyphony, and we have some other stuff that I'm going to show you. So now let's get started with something super simple. I'm going to clear everything and go into the clean preset and it sounds like any synthesizer it's just a simple so tooth all right very very basic and that's a so tooth so first let me show you something if we'll just click this x so this is pretty much the starting point we have no filters we have just one oscillator that's on the left right here you can change the wave shape it's a so tooth you can select a square all right, let's go back to Sotus and I can double click anywhere on this line and that will add a filter and it designated as one. If I click right here, I'll have another one, but they're not really doing anything. So let's hover on top of number one here. I'm going to click and you see that this is, uh, I mean, just a classic, very simple bell shape filter but I can turn that into a low pass and now if I'll just drag this up I'm gonna get that very famous resonance bump and we can again position that and move them around but you also see this drop down right here so we have different types of filters and I'm not going into those Right now, I'm not going to explain the difference. And frankly, that's too much information at the moment. But again, let's have a quick look at the types of filters. So not only that we have all these types, we also have the different slopes. So we have 6, 12, 24, 48 dBs per octave. Very cool and very useful. But not only that we have those four filters, we can route them in different ways. So right now they are serial, one after the other. So all the oscillators, right now we only have one, let's add another one. So all these oscillators go into the filters, filter number one, filter number two, and finally going out. So that's how it works. But we also have these uh, buttons right here. So these are filter frequency offset and the uh, filter peak offset and it means that all four or whatever number of filters that you have will adjust accordingly so if that's not clear let me know in the comments i'll be happy to explain that or read the user manual anyway to the right we have the effect so we can add right away to get something going some reverb and again we have more options if you click this you get the pre-delay time and brightness just anything like that and we can add some delay and on the drop down you'll see that you can actually save presets so that's very cool and this is the delay and it has its own filtering it's very cool and we have the feedback right here and we can lock this to our BPM. All 
right? Very, very nice sound. So now let me show you the modulations. And on the bottom, we have right now pitch band. We have key tracking, keyboard tracking. We have the velocity. If you click this, uh, they're not really connected to anything. And I'm going to leave them as is, but uh, I'm going to show you something later. Let's do very basic modulation move. I'm going to add an envelope generator. And that's just your regular envelope. So anytime you need an envelope, that's what you'll use. And now all I need to do is connect that to my filter number one. And now filter number one will listen, will behave whatever the envelope tells it to do. And we can set the initial point right here. And the amount of modulation is right here. Now, if uh, all, all these is things that you're not sure about, you're not into sound design, you, you don't know what an envelope is, you don't know what is, does it mean to have modulation amount, don't worry about it, or just, I mean, try and experiment, try and see what exactly happening. So the envelope, is telling the filter to open and close and it's kind of programming the automation the attack the first phase right here will say how much time would it take for the filter to open up and then there there's a whole bunch of other things that happen during the play and finally we have the release the release will be the fade away the time that the filter will close back when I finish my playing, when I pick my fingers off the keyboard, take my fingers off the keyboard. So you can see the representation right in the middle in the GUI, you can see the filter open up and then close. Right, and maybe that's too much reverb and delay, that's fine. And so that's the basic behind how you do modulation. But let's see what else we have. So we also have an XLFO. Let's take that one. And what I can do with this is use it to automate things over and over again in a sort of a cyclic manner. So I'm going to connect that to filter number two. And I'm just going to do something like this. And now immediately you see what the LFO does. But why do we call it XLFO? That's because it's extra fun. You click this plus here and you'll get more moves. Another plus and you can do something like this. Right, but there's so many things that you can do with this one. So I can click this piano roll and now I'm going to lock things to the keyboard or to, uh, to a scale, right? So that's really uh, a lot of fun. And I can just change this glide thing and now it really uh, behaves more like a sequencer. And what I can do again is click this dot right here and set the amount of modulation. Now it will, it will be more pronounced. And I can add more steps. Right, so few other things that you can find here is the uh, different modulations like key tracking, velocity, and I can take this velocity right here and connect it to our main volume, for example, or maybe to a particular uh, oscillator. So what I can do here is go and just connect it to this one right here. And what I can also do is use the pitch bend right here and I can use it to change the master tuning. 
Right, you can see that it was already already set for me, so I can click that X, and that's the idea. Let's see what else we have in terms of uh, modulation. So we have a new slider. What is that? So slider means a slider, and I can connect it to several targets, and now it will do whatever it does, it will do it for both of them. So again, I'm going to click that. So oscillator one level and two level are now connected with this one slider, and I can connect that also to this filter. So that's very, very easy to use, and there are some synthesizers that will be much more complex and much more cryptic about how you use the modulations and how you program it and how you create sounds. And this one is really, really easy. By the way, you can check my channel. Maybe I'll put a link or I'm going to put a, a playlist where you can find the Timeless uh, 3 review that I've done and also uh, the Volcano review. So all these plugins use the same idea for modulations, which is really easy to understand and easy to use. So that's the slider here, and I can click this plus again and go with uh, something else like an XY controller. And this is really interesting stuff. So I can use that, for example, to connect to our, uh, let's go with filter number one, and, or, you know what, let's do this. I'm gonna connect it to the filter frequency offset, and the Y is gonna be connected to the peak. And now, whatever I do here will affect both of these uh, controls. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, what I can also do is I can use this one right here and just control anything else. I can use that, for example, to control this volume right here. Or maybe the reverb. Right, so before we end, let me just show you a few more things. On the bottom, we have the MIDI Learn, and you can see that you can program this to your MIDI keyboard or MIDI controller. That's very uh, easy. And then we also have the arpeggiator. Right now it's off, I can turn it on, and you can set a lot of things here, including the number of octaves, and there's uh, the, the order, the I mean, you can go up and down, up and down, maybe as played or random. And you can also lock that so it will keep those settings as you change the presets. So let's have a listen. And if you want to lock the rate to your BPM, you just click this note right here and we can set it to... Uh, 16th and you have straight and dotted and so on. So very easy. You can also set this to high quality. So the synthesizer will use a little bit more CPU. And we also have this polyphony right here. So right now we have the number of uh, units, I mean the unison spread and the polyphony right here. And you can set that. And we also have the tuning system. So that's super interesting. And there are different scales. And maybe we'll talk about that. So I'm going to do a reset. So we'll be back to the default tuning. And we also have some other things right here. They are kind of hidden. So uh, maybe, um, you know, <laughs> some, some people might miss that. You know, when I'm hovering on top of that, I see the, the widths. So we have the stereo width, and we also have the master volume right here, and also panning. 
So that's kind of hidden and I hope uh, people don't miss that. So pretty much done. I mean, that's most of the things you need to know about how to use this synthesizer. So if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. If you're not subscribed, if you have any questions or anything, let me know in the comments. And uh, also, by the way, there are many, many useful presets. And I'm going to just end this video with a, a demo of some of them. And if there's uh, something else you want to learn, again, let me know. Get in touch with me through Facebook and Twitter and Discord and all the links in the description of this video. See you very, very soon. Thanks and bye-bye. By the way, you can buy this plugin directly from me because I'm a FabFilter uh, reseller. So you can get that directly from my shop, my audio studio, and uh, that will go directly to support this channel. So I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks and bye-bye. And of course, stick around for the demo.